Hello friends, this video on molecular basis of inheritance part 32 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. So let's start talking about the lac operon. So lac operon of E. coli was the first operon to be discovered. As I was telling those French scientists, they came up with this concept of operon and they first of all discovered this lac operon. Now what is lac operon and why is it named lac operon? So it is named after lactose, that is lactose operon. Now why is it named after lactose? That's, that is because this operon talks about the fermentation of lactose, the process of fermentation of lactose. Now normally this E. coli bacteria, they how do they get their, their energy? So their preferred source of energy would be glucose. So glucose will be... Uh, glucose will undergo uh, oxidation to produce them energy. Now in absence of the preferred source of energy that is glucose, what happens sometimes they are kept in lactose. So now when lactose enters inside their body, they need to be fermented, right? O only fermentation would be able to provide the energy. And what do we mean by fermentation? That means breaking down lactose into monosaccharides because lactose itself is a disaccharide. So it is not the simplest form of carbohydrate. So lactose further needs to be broken down into glucose and galactose, right? So this process of breaking down lactose into glucose and galactose to provide energy to E. coli that is known as fermentation of lactose. So this process of fermentation of lactose is controlled by the operon which is called lac operon. So that is why it is named lac operon. So we will see how exactly the operon functions, what are the various parts for this operon. So we will talk about everything here. So the regulation of gene which codes for three enzymes involved in lactose fermentation. Now this process of fermentation of lactose requires enzymes because enzymes can only cause fermentation of lactose. And what are enzymes? Enzymes are nothing by but nothing but proteins and how are proteins synthesized proteins are synthesized from our mRNA so these enzymes so there there will be certain portion of the gene or there will be certain genes which are responsible for producing the RNA which in turn codes for the proteins which make these enzymes right so here in this process we in this operon we are going to talk about how those genes which code for the enzymes they, which are involved in lactose fermentation are controlled so please understand what is the purpose of lac operon lac operon is an operon where regulation of gene expression has been shown so which genes are being controlled here the genes which result in the formation of proteins which act as enzymes for fermentation of lactose. So before we proceed, we need to know which are the enzymes that are involved in lactose fermentation and which are the genes that control the formation of those en enzymes or which control the synthesis of those enzymes. So here if you look at this figure, you can actually see the green color region which you see here. This is the promoter for lac operon. This region is the operator. And then this region which you see here is the structural gene. So now in this region of structural gene, there will be there are three genes which are present for and these genes are responsible for the production of the enzymes. So let us suppose gene 1, 2 and 3. So we will see what are these three genes and we will see how they are responsible for coding for the proteins which act as enzymes for lactose fermentation. So let us look at the various parts of the lac operon. So let us look at the various parts of lac operon. So the important parts that constitute the lac operon are the regulatory gene and the structural genes. Other than that, we have as usual the promoter, operator. So this is where we have them. So as I mentioned before also, this is the promoter. This is the operator and this is where we have the structural genes. So in structural genes, what do we have? We will talk about that. So let us start from the beginning. Let's start with regulatory gene because regulatory genes are the one which actually produces the regulators. 
the regulatory gene which produces the regulatory proteins here or the repressors here is the I gene which is often written as I gene and I stands for inhibitor. So I think you got an idea about what kind of regulation it is going to be. So yes, lap operon is an example of negative regulation. So we will see here that we do not have activators here, we do have repressors. So when the repressors bind to the operator region, then the genes are turned off, the structural genes are turned off. So the regulatory gene is the I gene which produces the repressors. So these genes codes for the repressor and then these repressors bind to the operated region. So now when we talk about the structural genes, so what are the various structural genes present? Now there are three structural genes which are present that is LAC, Z, LAC, Y and LAC, A. So this is these, this region is the structural genes and here we have three genes that is LAC, Z, LAC, Y and LAC, A. So these are the three genes. Now what is the purpose of each of these genes? Let us quickly see. So LAC, Z is that gene which codes for the beta galactosidase so beta galactosidase is the enzyme now enzymes are nothing but proteins so this is the enzyme which is being coded by this gene so this lac z will form mrna which in turn will code for these proteins so they will form this enzyme and what is the purpose of this enzyme this enzyme helps in the hydrolysis of disaccharide so it actually helps in hydrolysis of lactose to form glucose and galactose so this is the purpose of beta galactosidase now what about LACY? So LACY is the next gene in the structural gene section which codes for an enzyme called permease. Now by looking at the name you can see that permease is something which increases the permeability of the cell for something. So what does it do? It actually increases the permeability of the cell to beta galactose. In turn, it helps in transporting more lactose within the cell. So it increases the permeability of the cell so that more lactose can enter inside the cell. So under what situation more lactose needs to be entered inside the cell? As I said, now E. coli will need some source of energy. So the preferred source will always be glucose because it is the simplest form. But if glucose is not available, then it is kept in a medium with lactose. So that time the cell should allow lactose to come get inside inside the cell. So during that period this permease enzyme will increase the permeability of the cell so that more transportation of lactose can take place into the cell. So now we have the last structural gene that is LAC A and this gene codes for an enzyme called beta galactosidase transacetylase. Now what does this do? There is well, there is, there is not very certain information about the role of this enzyme in lac operon, but these two enzymes, beta galactosidase and permease, they definitely play very crucial roles in the process of fermentation of lactose. So now here we will see that how the uh, expression of these three genes, lac Z, lac Y and lac A are being controlled by the regulators. And what are the regulators here? The regulators are the repressors here. That means they are negative regulators and they are being produced by the I gene. Now this I gene can be present nearby or they can be present somewhere else as well. As I said, it is not necessary that the regulatory gene has to be a part of that operon. So that is not mandatory. And as we know, this is the promoter and this is the operator we have already discussed about. Thank you. Please visit www.examfear.com to watch more videos, attempt free online test, get free study material, find tutors and mentors. Thank you once again.